Here is a pink ink by Graf von Faber-Castell Yazakura. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. Right off the bat, you might think this is a bad ink because this is a short video. Well, it isn't. I didn't use the other writing samples because I didn't think it added anything here, so I cut them in post. This is a very soft pink color that definitely isn't going to be for everyone. I think for how light it is, it is amazing how easy it is to see and read on the page but I do think a full page of it may be a bit much to handle. Although I have gotten a ton of use out of this as a second and third color on the page, adding comments to my teaching notes at school. This is a very consistent performer in terms of both tone and shading. I really like most that it is a definite pink and not at all like a faded or washed out diluted red. The pen for today is a Caveco Sport. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with an extra fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there, starting with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. <laughs> Looking at the extra fine, I'm really hoping it all comes through on camera. And when I'm looking up at it, it appears to be, I see it with no problem with my own eye, despite how light it actually is. There is no feathering and there is no spread. There is plenty of shading going on. And it's not like the shading that goes on is what allows you to really be able to see it. Look at Heads for Home on the second line, where the H is a bit darker, the E lightens a little bit, the A and beginning of the D are lighter, and the DS darken up some, where 4 has a lighter tone at the beginning and does darken through the word, through the O specifically, into the R. And Home, the H and E are definitely darker than the OM in the middle. I like what I'm seeing here. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. I do think the thicker lines make it easier to see than it was with the extra fine. Now, when it comes to shading, though, so, no feather, no spread. I don't know if I said it. I, I get when it comes to shading, I think the shading, because of the little bit thicker lines, is a little bit more pronounced and easier to see. Like on Bilbo, second line, where the B is a nice mid-tone, it lightens up on the I, darkens on the L, lightens on the bow at the end. And I think that again, the shading, it's not that it's huge, it's definitely there, and you don't have to hunt for it. It's really very nice. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium and the extra fine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. And once again, the thicker lines in all of the downstrokes really do make it much easier to be able to see and identify everything that's there. It also adds to the shading quite a bit. Quickly after them on the second line, you really see it's the downstrokes that really do get darker, especially in quickly. Now the UIC is quite light though I can see it hoping it shows up on camera after is mostly a lighter word except for the te now them I think shows quite a bit more of what we see as a lot of the writing where the t is lighter the h gets darker into the e during the m it lightens up and then darkens at the very end of the m looking at the back of the page to no surprise there is no bleeding or ghosting like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately 11 milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. 
looking at the extra fine nib. It is just a tad bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine, making it even easier to read. No feather, no spread. I am not at all unhappy with what I'm seeing in the shading, looking at unhappy on the first line, where the U is a little bit darker than the N. The H darkens up, and during the A, it gets lighter. First P is light, second P is dark. Er, the Y lightens up again. Looking at the medium nib, it is a, the same tone as it was with the extra fine, just a little bit darker than on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We do get some shading just as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine inside this paper that's really not made for fountain pen. Inside the on the first line, you see that most of inside is a lighter tone. It's the downstroke of the D into the E that is darker. Same with the dots of the I, where the, the T is lighter than the he at the end. So it does well in some of the shading. And you don't have to, again, you don't have to hunt for it. It is very nice. Even the lightest tones of very poor one on the third line, I can read that with no problem. It is shocking how well this ink really does for how light it is. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, just a little bit uh, darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. No feather, no spread. Yes, there is shading there in the morning on the first line. The T is a little bit lighter than the H, which darkens up some, and the ER lighten up a little bit, and the E gets darker again, where in two letters, two tones, quite nice, the starts lighter and gets darker, where morning at the very end is mostly incredibly light, except for the G. And regardless how light that morning is, I see the entire word really makes us an amazing ink in what it's able to do with how light it is. Looking at the back of the page, no shocker that there's no bleeding and no ghosting given how light this ink is. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right marked with a D is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diamine Flamingo Pink. Here is Pen BBS number 129. Here is Pilot Cosmosu or Cosmos. Here is Thornton's Pink. While it's nice to see inks in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements this color on the page. Here is a purple ink by Diamine Imperial Purple. Here is a black ink by Graf von Faber-Castell Carbon Black. Here is a brown ink by Diatrementis William Shakespeare Dark Brown. Here is a gray ink by Krishna Pencil. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. There is some feathering and spread. You see it some, it's not a big deal. It's not something to really be worried about. The shading, there's a couple of moments that happen, not really feeling it here. Look at feeling on the first line. The E's are only slightly darker than the F and the L. Same with the very down part of the G. Now, 
shading is not something I tend to worry about when it comes to uh, copy paper. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, just a little bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. We do get feathering and we do get spread, though it's not the end of the world in what we're seeing. I think it shows up a little heavier in though. Speaking of though and shading, the T is a little bit lighter. The H darkens up some. The R in the middle, kind of light though still able to be read where the H is a little bit darker. I would say if you're a student using this, your teacher's probably not going to be happy, even though I keep saying I can read it without a problem. Looking at the stub nib, it is a little bit lighter than it was with the medium. It's the same tone as the Clairefontaine. We do get feathering and we do get spread, though I want to say the feathering and the spread are not as easy to spot here as they were with the medium. So it's controlling it even better. Maybe that squeegee like action of the stub is helping it out. When it comes to shading, you will never really get tons of it. Look at Will Never on the first line. The dot of the I and the first L are a bit darker than the word, and the down loop of the second L also a bit darker, where Never is mostly a light tone, except for that E, which is a bit darker. Kind of funny to call it a light tone, considering how light this ink is. Looking at the back of the page, there's no bleeding, no ghosting. You could easily write on both sides of the page with no loss of information here. This is a rare thing for copy paper, and I will call this a winner. So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. In the extra fine medium and the stub, it gives almost an idea identical performance in shading and tone. I did use it also off camera in a Pelican P200 and it looked exactly the same from that much wetter medium nib. So that leaves me with a dealer's choice. The only real choice is if this lighter pink is a good one for you. So if it is, ink it and enjoy it in any pen. This is the end and thanks for watching.